It's time to play with the new toys. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to Montec at the Lake. So you saw most of these things in my Christmas art supply haul video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link that below because oh, what fun. But you're going to see it all again today. And I have a few extra things that came after that video was done. So I have even more fun stuff to show you. So this may end up being a two-part video, even though I know part twos always go way down. If it's a three-part anything, first part gets 100, 100 views, second part gets uh, maybe 80, and the third part gets 12. Like, nobody, nobody wants to see anything to the end, so I'm going to try and cram it all into this one. You can fast forward if you like. I'm going to start with something that was not in that original video because it's right here on top. It's this little bugger it's a usb rechargeable book light no. so i got this for christmas and i really it wasn't on my crabby crafter wish list it wasn't anywhere on my wish list it was an accident <laughs> it was supposed to go to somebody else but that person ended up getting a different one from somebody else and so i got to keep this one and i don't know if you can tell but it's a beautiful shade of gray purple which i just adore and it is a cute little bugger i have no idea how much it cost rechargeable you just pull the little cap off and it, you just plug it in it's got different settings on off different like daylight bright light three different three or four or five several different intensities but it also has different colored lights not like an rgb light where you have every spectrum every color in the spectrum but different kind of reading lights which is brilliant for such a little bugger so of course you pull this down and clip this on your book page thusly and then this little head tilts down and tilts sideways so if you have a wider book you don't have to keep moving the book light. I've had a lot of book lights in my time and this is the smartest one so far. I quite like it. And I said in my Christmas book video that I, I love reading by the light of the tree. Well, I've taken the tree down and where I like to sit, I have no lights, just the fireplace across the room. So this is going to come in very handy, even though I didn't think I needed one. I'm very glad to have it. You know, sometimes the universe just works that way. Here, you didn't ask for it. You didn't even know you needed it, but you're really going to love it. <laughs> so again, this is the brand name. I don't know if you can pick colors or if they're all purple. I have no idea, but it came from Amazon. Next is my little compass. Now, you don't need me to show you how to use a compass. You just put it down and spin it around to get circles. You just spin it around to get circles well i'm telling you what it's not as easy <laughs> as you would think i had to ask dr google slash teaching assistant youtube how to make this work and there are there are lots of videos and i was wondering because it's plastic it's just a cheapy is it does it work better or worse than just any other and you know i did that one pretty well Sometimes you can spin the paper around to make it easier. There's a whole bunch of videos out there. I've already tried it. What do I want it for? To make these kind of circles. See if I can do another one as easy. If you just do it and don't think about it, it's not too bad. But as soon as you put your mind to it and start thinking about making a circle with this thing, uh, it can go sideways for you fast. But I like making circles of all different sizes in order to doodle them in or watercolor them in or make uh, Zentangle type things or make circles that I can cut out that are at least they start out perfectly round, you know, cutting out a circle because I don't yet have a circle punch or a set of circle punches to do those things. So yes, I had to inquire about how to use this and these measuring <laughs> when i put it on two if i wanted a two inch circle i thought well i'll put it on two that's two inches it says right there well of course i got a four inch <laughs> i got this massively large circle and so i had to figure that game out math is, you know, i'm an english major let's just leave it at that so i talked about these the other day in that video i i have played with it just a tiny bit one of the things I really like to do is ink on watercolor. And I found this watercolor sketchbook I've had for I don't know how long. And I've really not done much with it. I have a lot of these things lying around that I I get and then I put away and can't find and forget I have them. 
and I like to ink watercolors. Now these, these are just one of my favorite things to do with watercolor is just throw in a background. I love that. I love to watch the color move and the water work with the color and the color work with the paper. And I just love all of that. And then later I go back and I figure out what might be there. Now I kind of obviously had in the back of my mind maybe buildings because my my throwing into the background has some squares. So I, I kind of knew I wanted a, a cityscape of some sort. And then I just go in with different kinds of pens. This looks like to be a Micron pen. Same here. So I wanted to see how this Pilot Razor Point Fine Line Marker Pen 0.5. Just do a little bit of inking on watercolor. Here's another one that I did that I I think it's too weak. I love all the colors and I like what started to happen, but all the lines are very, very fine. And so I may want to go in and just strengthen some of the things I like the best. Like I, I like this sort of, I don't know what this is, some kind of flower thing. So this is quite a bit bigger. My guess is this pen work is the 0 0.005 micron there's a huge difference you can already see how thick that line is so i may i may regret this because it's it's um quite a bit different but if i use a light hand with it perhaps i can pull it off and if i don't well then i've got goodies for collage this would make great collage fodder but i think this bolder pen will sort of support those finer lines. And just give it a little bit more oomph. Here too, this is not bad. I can just bold, just get a little bolder because I have, I don't have lights and darks in the color and you need a little bit of contrast. Everything here is middle of the road. The colors are not light, not dark. The lines are pretty fine and there's no fine line, heavy line. There's no contrast going on. It's all very mediocre. It seems juicier and bolder than what I expected it to be. And it just makes those things pop out a little bit more. Uh, I had another one here I was going to do, but I don't know. This is awfully bold, but maybe these these are pretty dark colors. Maybe that's what's going to take here. I'm sure this is something I saw someone do on YouTube and I thought, oh, that'd be fun. Let's try that. And I did it. Certainly not an original anything. But it's all kind of muddied together, blurred together. But if I can take this nice, bold black pen and just give those trees a tiny bit more definition it may make all the difference and when i do ink work over watercolor i try to follow the brushwork that's there like if i have my trees going this way i'm not going to make my pen branches go up you know you want to follow what's already there and boy, this pen is, is sinking right in. Is it bleeding? It's not bleeding. Of course, this is nice, heavy paper. Let's see, does it bleed on copy paper? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit there. You can see it, but it did bleed. It's starting to bleed the more you... But of course, you know, the more you put down, the more... It's got to go somewhere, so it will bleed through. But the inking here, you can see it pretty well on this tree, but on this one, it's 
I can see it better on camera than in person. It seems to be just soaking into that paint. Unless you turn it sideways, then it has the ink has a tiny bit of a sheen. I'm not picking it up here on camera. There it is. Just a tiny bit of a sheen, and so I can see it sideways. So what I may do is just go off the tree that's there and just make it a little bit more defined again with this pen work. I don't know why this one got so crooked on me, but she is crooked. I'm not real crazy about that. I think that made a big difference. It's no longer muddy. Those trees are popping off of that color quite a bit better with just a little bit of inking. Ink can do wonders with watercolors that you're just not too hip on or too crazy about. Inking after you watercolor can bring them to life, and I think this is a really good example of that. Of course, I got the thing to just... One of the things I do with all my pens is write. And it writes fast and clean. There aren't any... No lumps or drops, you know, like some pens will just make a mess, and this doesn't. This is nice, clean, and no smearing. It dries really fast. Those are all good things. So I, I can recommend these, um, not for fine line work, even though because they're they're a point oh five. You know, they're they're pretty big and they're nice and juicy. Juicy's good when you know it's coming. <laughs> When you don't know what's coming, can can be kind of problematic. So that gets us to these little buggers. They're Stabilo. So, oh, I'm way too close, Care. I, I, I heard you. I'm sorry. I'm not paying attention. Stabilo, so I'm wondering if they are water-soluble. We shall see. Again, I didn't expect these to be so tiny. Let's start with the purple one. They're so tiny. They feel like a tiny little pencil. Get our little water brush out. Let's see. So they're not waterproof, but they're not moving. It doesn't move with the water, it just bleeds. Unlike a Stabilo pencil. This too will stay in place, but you can move it around a little bit. That's what a Stabilo pencil does. And I thought maybe the Stabilo pencils are great for shadowing. You can just put your little pencil mark underneath and then just give it a little bit of, just a little whisper of water. And it's a really easy way to throw in a shadow on your junk journal stuff, super easy. So the pens are not bleed proof or waterproof. Well, I shouldn't say bleed proof. Are they bleeding? Oh yeah, they bleed. <laughs> it doesn't feel juicy, but they are bleeding. It is bleeding and it certainly did with the water, but even without the water, that's a nice big bleed mark. But I like the vibrancy. I like the vibrancy of the colors. So this would be great for shadowing. Okay. Just doodle marks. It's always fun to test the light colored ones. Will they show up anywhere? Not going to show up on black. I didn't expect it to, but things surprise me all the time. Who knows? They're so tiny. It just feels like, like a toy. I wonder how they blend. Let's blend some together. Orange just kind of took over the yellow rather than blending. Let's see. Same with the red. The top color blends. It doesn't really blend, but let's say we wanted a, a reddish purple. If we cross hatched in with the purple, 
now it's a reddish sort of purple. We have to go back with the purple again and and put in some more. Let's might as well try all the colors. And the caps are pretty close. Sometimes you get markers and the caps look nothing like what the ink is actually, but that's pretty close. That's probably so far the least close. Pretty blue, that's pretty spot on. Nice bright teal. And they're a pretty fast little pen to do quick marks. They're nice and smooth. I dare say they're smoother than a Micron. Although a Micron I do believe is steadfast, water fast. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I had my microns out. Nice Christmassy green. Look at all the greens. Dark and medium and light green. Great thing to stick in a, a grab-and-go box. There, it does fit. Nice. Easy. Throw in your bag and go a little sketchbook, and you can do all kinds of things with these. Since we're talking about pens, this is another thing that was not in the original video that I did get for Christmas. This is called a glass dip pen. Years ago, I, I used to love to do calligraphy. I didn't do it very well because <laughs> I don't have the discipline to practice a lot. But plus, writing primarily with my left hand can be troublesome when you're trying to learn calligraphy from a right-handed person. And most people who do it are right-handed and Oh, I just got frustrated. But this, it's a nib pen, but it's a glass nib pen. It's just a dip. You can't change the nibs at all, but it's hand handmade glass dip pen and treated myself to some Windsor and Newton calligraphy ink. I got violet and black, excuse me, violet and blue black because I already had uh, Bombay black India ink. So I got blue black. And if you've never seen a, a dip pen, I, I just think they're great fun. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It just seemed like something I needed. Pop the bubbles I just made and you dip it. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of videos on YouTube and TikTok about how to... So the tip is all swirled glass and it comes down to this point and then you just once you load it you just make make marks with it and that ball is there to stop it from getting up into your fingers so This would be fun to also ink on watercolor. I have to get to know it a little bit better than, than I know this. And I can see it like a slight angle on the very tip. And so that's where you got to keep, that's where the flow is. I tend to turn my writing instrument a lot. I've noticed it especially when I edit videos where I'm sketching or drawing. I stop and switch and, and spin my pen around. Well, this has a, an, a definite angle where that ink down here, I switched it. And so it kind of dragged across the paper rather than flowed ink to it. Big difference. Just do your downstrokes. You get sort of a faux calligraphy thing happening. Just your downstrokes. The down strokes. Anyway, I can see that this would be great fun doing cross hatching. And I've seen videos where people do all of their drawing and their sketching now with dip pens, which is fine and dandy. Uh, I don't know that I would have the patience to reload every five seconds. While I have this out, I will show you the blue-black. This is a nice, deep, dark, almost black violet, which I love. First, I should clean 
the purple off this. There are cleaners for this and holders for this. Pardon me, but they look like water bongs. You put water in the bottom of it and there's a place to hold it and there's a, a place, there's all kinds of little things and they're also made out of glass and they look like bongs to me. I don't have one of those, so I'm just gonna waste this beautiful purple ink into this rag. I'm gonna have to come up with a little notebook or something of unwasted ink if I'm gonna be doing this. So this is the Windsor and Newton Blue Black. The first one was called Violet. Ooh, and I love that. You can really see in the glass that it's blue, but dark, almost like a dark teal. You might be able to hear the birds out. It's like springtime today. We even had some rain. So I'll try and write that again, keeping the pen. I'm not sure why, but I love cross hatching for shadows and detail work. So let's put this next to this black. And it really looks, I like the way the glass sounds against the glass jar. Kinda looks black black. Super fun. If you write with it, it surely forces you to slow your roll. <laughs> slow that shit down because if you don't, it just sort of scratches up the paper. Ooh, that'd be great fun doing those just kind of squiggly. It's one thing you can't really do with a nib pen is every which direction, all directions like that. Because the nib has to be in a certain in a certain way to make that ink flow. So that's really kind of cool, but you'd want to keep that really clean so that the next time so your little you don't want to get ink all stuck up in those grooves at all. Now, I've said in different videos, my watercolor video, that when you get a new watercolor brush, it comes with this plastic tip on it. And I say throw them away, throw them away, throw them away, throw them away, because they will ruin. If you try to put them back on after using your brushes, you will ruin your brand new brush. So in the case of the watercolor, I say throw it out. But in this case, because of that glass tip, and if anything breaks or chips right on this tiny, tiny little piece, it's the pen is useless. So in this case, keep that rubber nib and you can see that, I think you can see it. It's a good quarter inch of protection. You'd really have to jam it. And I keep it face up in my, in my jar here so that nothing happens to that tip because that's all important. All right, what else can we play with? One of the other things I got for Christmas was a good kneaded eraser. Why would you need a good kneaded eraser? Well, there's all kinds of reasons to have one. For example, when you're doing watercolor, and you have a pencil sketch. I like to see pencil lines through watercolor. To me, it just m means a real human did it. You know, it's not computer generated. It's not digital art it's someone really did it you know uh but sometimes you don't want them to be as dark and what i've seen people doing and i think it's brilliant wasn't an option or nobody thought of it when i was doing 
the stuff way back when, but they they roll it up and then just sort of roll it over their drawing. And you can see where my original pencil line is and where I've just rolled right through here and it lightened all that pencil. It didn't take it away, but now when I do the watercolor, me, it's not going to be as obvious or as obnoxious. I still have my lines to paint around. I need to know where the details of his ears are, where I think the details of his ears should go and where his eyes should be, but it's not as dark. It's not a pencil drawing. It's just a sketch to get you to the watercolor part. I'm not a drawer. I don't have the patience. I never had the patience to to practice drawing, which is a hindrance in some way because I can't draw. I can't draw for shit. Uh, I can sketch and I can kind of guesstimate, but to do a nice drawing, I have to use other methods. Like sometimes I trace. When I did home portraits, I did use a projector because I wanted to get the perspective just right to do a home watercolor portrait. Um, so I have used all kinds of tools to get over my handicap of not being a good drawer, but for my money, I'd rather paint than draw. And so if I can just whip out a sketch and not have to have it precision, perfect, blah, 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 I can just quick get things down, then I can paint it. I can paint it to life and I'll have to draw it to so life. For me, it's too, it's double the work. I see people who sketch out their stuff and they get it to a full on wonderful graphite drawing and then they paint it. I could have painted five paintings in between. Everybody does it different, but that's why I got the kneaded eraser. It was just to take back some of that darkness so it's there but not as obvious. Plus, I want to learn how to draw better. I want to do more sketching and a good kneaded eraser, you can't beat it. This is super soft. It's by Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell. I think it was about three bucks. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. We'll come back to this in just a minute because that was one of my gifts as well. I have another ink here. We could talk about this real quick. Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I've wanted this forever and a day. People, I used to be a watercolor purist, meaning the only white, you don't put white on your palette. This is watercolor purism. You don't put white on your palette. The white of your paper is the white of your painting. So you preserve it, either paint around it, put mascoid or frisk it over it, and then take back your whites later. That's problematic because it leaves a really harsh line. You still have to deal with that. But it's it's one of the options. Purism watercolor doesn't use white gouache. It doesn't use white ink. It doesn't use white acrylic. But I've I've come away from that thinking, yeah, whatever, I'm going to... I'm going to loosen up a little bit on that. So I wanted to try this Bleed Proof White, which I see a lot of people use as snow. Now, Dr. P.H. Martin is primarily known for inks, but this is pretty thick. I have this really crappy, and I mean crappy brush, but it's got this great handle on it. Perfect for stirring. So I was busy shaking it, and I don't think that did any good. I'm gonna give it a quick stir. Now this is not really ink. It's pretty thick. It's not acrylic thick. So I'm just gonna take and put some drops on my, my tree is there. We have to water it down to do any kind of spattering. Now I made it into snow. If I wanted to make it into stars, I could cut a quick little mask of piece of paper out and cover up my trees so that the stars didn't cover the trees. I suppose I could put a little bit of this in my palette and water it down a little bit. 
and do this with a fan brush. And let's see, I have this beautiful white paper or black paper. Oh yeah. That's wonderful if you want to do some white work on black paper. When that's watered down, I sprayed this stick with uh, water to get it to spatter on my thing here. Uh, so it's, it's even watered down, but look how nice it looks on that black. That's some fun mark making. Nothing goes to waste, you know. So I think that'll be fun. That'll be a nice tool to have in the craft room, whether I be watercoloring and making snow and stars and celestial and taking back my whites with this versus trying to argue with mascoid. Mascoid has its place. I love it. Do some oil pastels. I'm not sure, but I think these are in place of the Neo Colors, Mar the uh, Tim Holtz, whatever. I've never used these before, so I have no idea what I'm doing here, but I think the beauty of these is that you can blend them a little bit. These are nice metallic colors. Let's play on here. So you can work them in on black. You can't move it as much as I thought, but it does smudge a little bit. That would be fun for, again, shadowing or making different effects. I want to try on craft paper, shopping bag. I was folding two shopping bags. I have a video. It's coming out eventually, and I'll, I'll just tell you about it. But it's just shopping bags that I fold together. I was putting them together to put them away. And when they went together so nicely, I thought, oh, there's a journal. I sewed it up. I poked two holes in it, and then I sewed it up and made a little journal. Here's a nice little loose piece of paper. But I want to see what the colors look like on black, what they look like on white, and what they look like on craft. Because I like a lot of vintage stuff. I like doing things with craft paper what i like about them is they're metallic that's really cool and they have lots of shine especially when you smudge them like that I'm using grandma's nutcracker to get them all out here so craft and they're kind of metallic when they go when you just put them down but it's not until you smudge them that they get that nice metallic sheen that's good to know kind of fun Ooh. Ooh, look at that purple on that black. Let's get the green out. Let's do some Maleficent colors. Yes, please. More purple. Yes, please. Oh, those are fun. You can see Megan adding so much to embellishments with this or making some fantastic background pieces for clusters you know just cutting out little bits working i love that it works on black craft obviously and white so where did my green go we'll do the green around there and around here I don't think I have any, but I wonder if smudging sticks would work to, instead of getting the smudge all around, if you just hit the, instead of spreading it, if you just sort of melted it in place, you know, be more careful with it so that you don't get the smudgy, but you get the metallic. Maybe it's the heat of your hand and the smudging stick wouldn't matter. I don't know. Got some blue. And they're super smooth. You know, like you're used to crayons, you gotta kinda work, you gotta work at it a little bit. 
there's no effort involved here. They just sort of melt all over the whatever piece of paper you're working on. I think you're looking for substrate. Yeah, I think you're looking for the word substrate. No, I'm looking for the word that I said. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's me poking fun at people. That's what I do. Oh, that's kind of fun. No paint left behind. Clean your fingers off. That would make a fun. So if I cleaned off my purple and came over here. Okay. Oh, we gotta do the. Oh, I did the blue on the black. Okay, and then we have gold. Not sure what it'll do on craft paper because it's about that same color. But you do get a shine. So if you just wanted a little bit of, you know, if you just wanted to dress up the edge of your craft paper. You could do that. Oh, that's fun. It's almost exactly the same color. And of course, it on black, it will be awesome. Back on camera here. I'm sorry, I'm playing with my new toys. I'm not just, I just forget sometimes that I have people I gotta consider. Very pretty. There's only three. How can I miss one every time? Very smooth. So last we'll do the silver and we'll do that a little bit. So what's it like to go over? Can you mix two colors together? Well, sure you can. I think you can do anything with them. Not a big fan of gold. But I love silver. I can see me putting this all over the place. Mm-hmm. Those will be fun. Now the key is to remember that I have them and to use them. Remember where I put them so I can remember to use them. One last thing and then I'm going to cut it off here because we're going long. And the next one will be all my watercolor stuff. Now I've noticed the couple of watercolor videos that I did. Most people aren't interested in and that's okay. But if you want to see the watercolor stuff, I have two paper, two uh, blocks, two watercolor blocks that I got, this wonderful Cotman kit, and I want to show off my field kit a little bit again. I uh, One thing you didn't see, actually there's a couple pieces that you did not see uh, that I will put in that other watercolor video too. So I'm just going to talk about my glues, and then we're going to move on. So if you've been here five minutes, you know that I buy Scotch Create glue. That's what I prefer. I really would rather use this than anything. And I was getting some really screaming good deals with it. Four packs for about $12, which brings the price down from five to seven to about $4, sometimes $3 uh, per pack. I think I even got one pack of four for $8, which meant it went from five to seven to $2. But I think in hindsight, I was getting counterfeit because the stuff that I glued with it just came right apart, just came apart. And now you can't find those multi-packs anymore. You can only get single packs and they're, it's five to seven dollars a piece. So you get what you pay for, apparently. In an effort to find something better, I've ordered a couple different ones. Many haven't worked. And these are the latest two in the effort to find a decent replacement for the Scotch Create glue. I've glued some things in here, and of course I didn't really oh, pay a whole bunch of attention to what was where, but I did find that I was having a similar problem. This was glued, I believe, with this more glue. And what I have found with this compared to the Scotch Create, now the Scotch Create, once you get it warmed up, it's pretty, it, it gets nice and malleable. And 
when once it's warmed up you can get it to fl almost flow and what i have found with this more ink excuse me glue is that it's always hard which is better than soft i've seen some people that have problems with soft glue and that's no better but you have to put on a lot of it and I don't think I was putting on enough because w where it is stuck it is stuck you know like I can't just peel this off I don't even know if you can see what I'm talking about there's a little piece over here I can't just peel this oh I can but where there's a lot a lot a lot of glue it's stuck so is it any better than Scotch Create glue? I don't think so. I'd rather do it once and have it be right. That's my goal. Do it one time and have it just stick forever. And by having to go over it and 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 over it, that to me is time wasted if I can just go over it once with a better glue. Now I bought a 12 pack of this for 20 bucks. I'm gonna see if I can take it back because I'd rather have $20 of good glue than a whole bunch of crappy glue. Although I may have missed that deadline because it's been a while. The other one that I got was Scotch Purple Glue Stick. Mega size. On the package, it says it is permanent and acid-free and all those good things. And it is Scotch. But this works a whole lot like the purple Elmers. I didn't find any difference between, not enough difference anyway, between this and the purple Elmers. This is very soft and it too needs a lot. It's It comes off in clumps sometimes. This is a very soft glue. Now see here, you can see where the glue stuck. It was really stuck but this corner lifted. That was the Moors. I did the majority of this with the Moors. I'm pretty sure I did this page with the Scotch. And it's pretty stuck. You know, for what it is, it's pretty good. Will I order this again? Probably not. I don't like, I don't like how soft it is and that it comes off in clumps. Because then you get bumps underneath your glue stuff, and I don't like that. A lot of water in this one. You can see that this is all bumpy because of the moisture that's in. That's, you know, that's what happens when you have a soft glue. There's a lot of moisture in soft and or cheap glue. Now, this one and this one, they're not, they're not soft. There's very little moisture, although there is some moisture in here because... Because when you put when you put it down on that piece of paper that you want to glue, do you see how it's curling? That's the moisture in it affecting the paper. Now do this test with Elmer's glue stick, and it'll curl right up on itself because there's so much moisture in it. So... I like this. I The other thing that I have found different with the Moors versus the Scotch, can you see here where it's still around, it's still the shape of the glue stick. This one, as you use it, sort of, and I think, I think because it's a cheaper glue, it kind of mol melts down on itself. It squishes down on itself, so it's always overlapped here this sounds like such trivial stuff but if you're doing a lot of gluing and you're doing glue books and you want them to stay and you want it to be an enjoyable process you don't want to be fighting this stuff do you see here how now it's sort of overflowing down here and if i keep at it there's going to be a whole bunch of glue down here that i either have to throw away or find a way to work. And that's where your lumps come in. Or if I do that same thing with scotch, get it moving. 
it does not, it doesn't come back on itself. I hope, I hope you're seeing what I'm seeing and you don't think I'm cracked, but it hasn't come down here. It's maintained its shape. <laughs> We're just going to say it's maintained its shape. It stayed upright where it's supposed to. It did not melt down where it's not supposed to. And that is problematic. I don't want to have to deal with that all the time. I just want my glue to work. So as soon as I get done recording this video, I'm going to ask Dr. Amazon, can I please, please, please send back this crappy glue? It's not crappy glue, but it's not as good. I want as good or better. So if I can, then I will try that. I only ordered one of these. I ordered 12 of these, one package of 12. I'm going to try and send these back. This I'll use up and deal with it, whatever. It's good for sealing envelopes, if nothing else. But I think I'm just going to go back to my Scotch Create glue and hope that it's the real deal and it works really well. All right, so please please come back and watch the second half of my Try Me tour. I'm gonna, like I said, show you this and my other field kit. A couple things you haven't seen in the other video. I'm gonna talk about the two different watercolor blocks that I got and this wonderful, wonderful, I cannot wait to try it, watercolor travel brush set I, I haven't tried it yet i am chomping at the bit but i didn't want to do it unless i was recording so i have i have paced myself but please come back for that uh, i got a great book i want to show you i'll give you a flip through of that because you can't see much of it on amazon and tell you why even though i've been painting forever and ever why why would i buy another why would I buy another watercolor book? I've got an entire library of watercolor books. I will share that with you in the next video. Until we meet again, you go have a lovely, lovely crafty day. Love, love, love up your beastlies. And we'll oh. chat again soon. Mata the Lake. Out for now.